Hey everybody out there in YouTube land, this is Jen and Christian's with me and it's Saturday, but unfortunately we did the last episode. Well, for season one. For season one and we'll talk about season two. Well, actually you guys will already know our announcement before you see this video. Yes, I'm in Texas now. Hi. Yeah. Hi from the Texas, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we'll, uh, we'll address that in a live stream that will have already happened when you're watching this. Makes sense? Yes. Doesn't to me either. Me neither. <laughs> okay, so, but we are, but since we did all the episodes of season one, we did want to do a ranking, kind of like we did with the Creep Show. Yeah. And um, one thing I find very interesting, Christian doesn't know my list, but I, I, I do know his list, and they're very different. They're very different, they're, apparently. They're, they're very different, which I like. I, I like that, you know, but yeah, it just shows you where things are. Um, again, and before I, we get into it, let me say these are just our opinions, our personal, we try to be fair and objective but our personal opinions have to count in some yeah. way and and for me uh, uh, the ones i enjoyed the most are at my top that because they're the ones i they're the ones that i would go oh yeah i can watch it again where my bar the couple of the bottom ones i probably won't ever go back to watch it yeah absolutely whereas also if this is your your first video of our masters of horror stuff this is all serious we're watching every episode and reviewing it so we're basically just gonna get we're not gonna go super in-depth if you want our more in-depth thoughts there will be a playlist with a review of every single episode of season one in the description below. Cool. So, should we hit it? Yes, who wants to start? Uh, you start. Okay, my number 13 is The Fair-Haired Child. Boo! This episode, Boo! This episode was boring. Nothing interesting happened. Um, the it, it, the only really great part of it was Lori Petty, and it needed a lot more Lori Petty. I wasn't impressed by anything. The story wasn't all that to write home about. The acting, besides Lori Petty, was pretty mediocre. The creature design, I, like I said in the video, looks like a Halloween mask. It just didn't work for me. It's way higher on my list. I'm interested to see where. Okay, so for my bottom pick for number 13, I'm going to go with chocolate. And to be fair, none of these episodes, even the lowest ranked ones, are necessarily bad. But I was really bored with chocolate. Like, I like the performance from Henry Thomas, but it just, it wasn't horry enough for me. This this one doesn't, it isn't a horror story, really. It feels more... It kind of is, but really isn't. It, it just feels very much like a... It's a good short, which I guess is appropriate for this, but it just doesn't go all the way. The best thought part of it is the performance from Henry Thomas. I have it a bit higher because his performance is really good, but yeah. I do agree with you. It wasn't enough of a horror story. For me, what based it, okay, which episode would I probably never rewatch again? It would be Chocolate. I understand that. What's your number 12? Number 12 for me is Dance of the Dead, which is probably, on a technical level, the worst episode of the entire series. The only, oh, Robert the only part that saves this episode from being on the bottom of the list is Robert England playing this like concierge of this like MC kind of thing. Yeah, the MC of this sh of this show, where stripper it show, stripper show of reanimated corpses, and he also is a drag queen. Apparently, I, they never go into it, but I, I do like that little touch. He is the highlight of this episode. It has a cool premise. It has a very cool premise. It's very and it does feel almost Clockwork Orange esque at certain points, like downright yeah. homage Clockwork Orange in one scene, which is my favorite movie. So I should appreciate that, but it just didn't work. It. Much like, much like I was saying with chocolate, it just doesn't feel like a horror story. It's mainly a love story about a punk boy and a goody uh, girl falling in love. It's basically the story of Valley Girl mixed with a hor a kind of industrial horror movie. I get that. I will agree with you that that one is um, one of the weaker ones, but it's a little higher on my list because I fucking adore Robert, Robert England, England and I love high. Toby Hooper too. Yeah, Hooper, yeah, you definitely. So, okay, uh, so you're number 12. Number 12 for me would be Dreams in the Witch House, which is based off a H.P. Lovecraft. Uh, I'm not, to be fair, I'm not a big love, Christian is, I'm not the biggest Lovecraft fan. I appreciate it, but it's not really my, my kind of thing. Um, it, it was kind of boring, and what really drug it down were those stupid faces on the rat. The effect looks horrible. It does, it does, and, and it's just, it's not bad, but I wouldn't, I, it's again, another one I probably will never go back to. My number 11 is Dreams in the Witch House. Wow. Um, yeah, like you said, it's, it, it 
it's not bad, but also this doesn't really do the story all that well because it it's a it's a very close adaptation, but I feel like it does it's missing a lot of the strengths that Stuart Gordon's H.P. Lovecraft adaptations had, which was changing it up for you know actually adapting it for screen instead of just doing a basically straight rip of the original story. Also, I forgot this episode exists when we were <laughs> making this list. I forgot entirely about this episode, so that says a lot. That does. It's an okay episode, but there's nothing remarkable in it. The most memorable part is the rats. Yeah, but and that's not memorable for a good reason. No. What's your number 11? My number 11 is Heckle's Tale. Um, Heckle's Tale, like, I do, the reason why it's not at my bottom is because... Corpse fucking? Yeah, corpse fucking. Um, it, it's very uneven. Like, there's a lot of, like, the ending I really liked, especially when we get the one reveal. Well, because the ending is the, because nothing happens in the story until the last 20 minutes. Yeah, but I did have a little fun with it. This one you could maybe talk me into watching again. Maybe, um, it wouldn't be a super one that I'd want to rewatch, but there was just enough to keep it off, like, the really bottom bottom. Bottom. My number 10 is Heckle's Tale. Cool. Um, it just, it, nothing interesting happens. It has a really cool premise. Oh, I kind of wish, I, I meant to talk about this in the review. I kind of wish instead of following Heckle, we were following like the um, steak oil salesman that can revive the dead. And so I feel like that would have been a little bit more entertaining and interesting. Like the story as it is, nothing really cool happens until like the last 10 minutes or so when we actually get to actual reanimated corpses and everything. And just didn't work. Very dull, very drab, very unimpressive. I would agree with you, but the, what saved it for me was like that ending. I did like that ending. That ending is pretty good, yeah. not gonna lie. The ending is what's pushed it over a little for the top. So for my number 10, I'm so sorry. I wanted to put this higher, but I also have to be fair and honest. That fucking bullshit. <laughs> Why did I ever start saying that that's what this channel's all about? I know, right? Um, it pains me to say, but Dance of the Dead. Um, there were a lot of reasons why Christian said, but Robert England is too much of a joy that 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 does really save it. I do like Toby Hooper. It's not a bad one. It just kind of... It, it needed a little cutoffs in some places. It, it dragged too long in a few scenes. And, um, yeah, but I, but I, but I do like this one because I fucking adore Rob. We I needed can, more Robert England. It should have been about Robert England. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, but I do have to agree. I agree with a lot of Christian's criticisms of this episode, but I adore Robert England too much. And I did have fun when he was on screen. And the story was interesting. It just... It was too full where it needed to be shortened, and shortened where it needed to be more full. Absolutely if that makes sense. Absolutely agree with that. My number nine is chocolate. Like I said, the Henry Thomas's performance is really damn great. It's an actually, it's a really cool story. It's a really cool idea. The problem is, is it's not, it's not a horror story. It's kind of just a whodunit mystery mostly. Mm -hmm. It's and not even a whodunit. Just kind of. It's not, it doesn't feel like a Masters of Horror thing. Everything else either is, you know, adapting classic literature or a pulp, feels like a pulp horror story or just something very unique. Whereas this just, it's a cool premise for, it's a cool idea, but it doesn't feel, as a, as a Masters of Horror segment, it doesn't work. If it was like another anthology series that wasn't horror based, it probably would be a lot better and a lot more higher on the list. But just as it is, as a Masters of Horror episode, very unremarkable. I get that. For my number nine, and again, I, I enjoyed that pretty much from here on out. I've enjoyed th these are the episodes I enjoyed, but there was a few episodes I enjoyed more, so that's why it's obviously number yeah. nine. And it would be Jennifer. I love Steven Weber. I love fucking Steven Weber. This was a fun one, but there's others that I just enjoy a little more. It was fun. That. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, it's a cute story. It's one I would watch again. Um, I enjoyed the, I, I enjoyed it that much. But th th there's other ones that are a little bit more golden for me. Yeah, I agree with you. Same, same like you said. Everything from out here on is all like pretty much a material. It's all really good stuff. Definitely recommend watching. For me, my number eight is Jennifer. Oh, really? Uh, Jennifer is. It, it's a really, really cool story. It is a really cool story. Stephen Weber is it gives a great performance. The actress playing Jennifer it gives a great performance. Um, um, but like I said, it's just, like you said, it's on the lower end of the ones I enjoyed the most. I really yeah. liked it. It's a really fun and interesting story. We didn't get any Weber wagons. Especially either. for a modern Argento piece, you yeah. know, that's impressive all on its own that it's actually not a trash fire like most of his newer stuff has been. But yeah, I did really, really enjoy it. I can definitely recommend it, but yeah. on the lower end. Yeah, I would agree with that number eight, right? Uh, yes. Okay. 
My number eight is Fair Haired Child. Oh, that's a bit high. In my Fuck opinion. you. Okay. Okay. Um, Christian didn't like, and again, the, the, the don't take this as gospel because our personal preferences. It was Christian's bottom. I really enjoyed this episode. It kind of reminded me a little bit of Pet Cemetery. Not completely, but it kind of had that feeling. Which I can agree? see that. Yeah. And um, I, I liked Lori Petty in this, and I I thought it was a sweet love story. At the end, I thought that was so sweet when he takes her under the arch. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I didn't, and I thought the creature design was fine. It didn't knock my socks off, but I didn't. I think it was that bad either mm, and guess. Lori Petty would like Christian said Lori Petty always had, had you know always gives a great performance yeah exactly so yeah so that's my number eight my number seven my, my number seven is one I really really again I love all of these episodes here on out but it's mostly just on how much I love them mm -hmm. this is a great episode highly recommended very 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 poignant in the in today's era uh, that being homecoming by mm. Joe Dante um, I love this episode. I this too. episode is really, it's a really great, like, black comedic satire of anything political. With like, zombies. With zombies. Like, no matter what political party, you'll find this incredibly funny. Yeah. Um, everybody's performance is really great. The story's actually really compelling and kind of poignant. Like, yeah. I, you know. Uh, it's probably the most poignant. Yeah, it is pro definitely the most poignant, um, story, uh, story out of all of them. It has a really, I really like the meaning behind it. I really like everything it's trying to say. And it's also really funny. It has some yeah. pretty good, uh, gags in it. It really does. I agree with you. It's higher on my list. I, but... I figured as much. <laughs> but I agree with you. For my number seven, I have you're not going to like this. Cigarette burns. Re really? That low? I'm Re surprised. It's not. A, no, no hate. And I know a lot of people, it's one of their favorites. Um, I really enjoyed this, but if I'm the, uh, fair and honest, guys, there are there are a couple of episodes that I just had a little bit more fun with. It's it's phenomenal. Like Carpenter was on his A game when he made this. I really enjoyed it, but there was a few others I uh, got to be honest. I had more fun with. I, have, I, I I I can absolutely see that. I entirely understand that. Yeah. Uh, for number six for me is one again. I love this episode. Another really great comedy. Uh, that being Sick Girl. Ah. Uh, this one. Uh, we talked about in the review that this one's very like you're either gonna love it or you hate it and I love this episode this episode's really damn funny mm -hmm. um, I'm a big Lucky McKee fan so his humor is all throughout this that and, was uh, a treat the, the performances are really great the story's actually really fun is really fun and kind of, it's actually kind of a sweet little love story by the end I actually do think it does actually do really good romance and by, by way of Lucky McKee yeah if, this is a great like <laughs> not like, Nicholas Sparks Lucky McKee yeah this is a Lucky McKee love story yeah, it definitely if you, if you if you haven't seen It'd be a good like Valentine's story to watch or something. Yeah, yeah, it actually would be, and you might guys might not like it, but we we are both big Lucky McKee yeah, fans. Yeah, I can totally understand if this is way lower on most other people's list, but we're massive Lucky McKee fans. Yeah, we are. So the next one is not you're not gonna be happy with either. Okay. And again, I love this director. I love his stuff, but in print. Real, really that low? I'm surprised. I. I love the gore. Like, the gore effects are wonderful. Uh, Billy Drago gives a wonderful performance. The story is engaging. Um, but it, it, I don't know. There's something missing from it for it to be, like, in the top I can tier. understand that. And I feel so bad because I am a big Mickey, uh, uh, Takashi Miike Takashi Miike fan. I'm a huge fan of his. I love his work. Um, and I think what a lot of it is is a personal thing because when I heard about this episode, some people said it was really too disturbing, and I was, and I at that time had I knew who who the director was, and I was like thinking, oh boy, and I think I went in with too high expectations. I can understand that. I can understand that because I didn't think it it was good, and it was probably the most gruesome of the series. Oh, but, easily. But it um, I, I was expecting more. <laughs> I was expecting more. I had seen Audition way before that. So I, I can understand that. Yeah. Bit higher on mine. I figured. Uh, for my number five, I love this episode. This is a great, great slasher story, and it is our first, the episode that introduced everybody to this series. Don Coscarelli's Incident on and Off a Mountain Road. You I heard love, me, Sparky! I love this episode. I love this episode. I'm a big Coscarelli fan. So a little I talked, higher on as mine. As I talked about on that episode when we reviewed it, but I, I love this. I love the performance everybody gives. I, it's a very fun slasher story. It's yeah, like It's it a is. very fun 
slasher story. It's very, I love all the effects. I love a lot of the gags that are in it, like especially when she's he's chasing her through the woods. There's a lot of really fun little when gags. When he stops and realizes what she yeah, did. Yeah, there's a lot of really fun little character bits and little ca character gags. Also, Grandpa Angus Scrim is pretty fucking delightful. He is awesome. Yeah. That is a treat. Yeah. It, it's higher on yeah. my Yeah, I, I absolutely understand that. It's really good. But it, it's one I do really love. It's an A-plus segment, mm -hmm. but I just happen to like my top four just a tiny bit more. I get that. It's kind of like with cigarette burns yeah, on me. Yeah, absolutely. Case. Okay, I get that. Um, my number five would be Homecoming. The I think this is a very poignant, like Christian said earlier, um, it, it really, I really enjoy this episode and I love uh, horror that makes me think. And this one really makes you think. And I can totally understand if it's not everyone's jam, but I really liked it. And on top of it being poignant and thought provoking, it also is funny. Yeah. It's it's fun. It's not, it's educating you or making you think, but it's, it's doing it in a very sneaky way. And zombies. And zombies. And zombies. Um, and you wouldn't think that would work, po political and zombies, but it actually does. It works pretty well, in my opinion. It, it kind of, in a weird way, reminds me of They Live in a Weird Way. Yeah, it does have that kind of vibe. Yeah. yeah I can see that. Yeah. Okay, so for my number four, um... The, my, my top four all were in the running for my number one. I love all of these segments just about equally. Um, but for my number four is John Landis's Dear Women. Okay. Okay. Um, this has my favorite line of the entire series. <laughs> I talked about it in that review. It's a but great But when line. they're talking to the guy, to the native in the casino and he's telling them the story, they're like, oh, well, what, why, what's the meaning behind this? He's like, man... Why do all your people's stories have to have meaning? <laughs> it's a lady with deer legs. That's pretty cool. <laughs> that, that is my favorite line. As a big fan of native folklore, um, that is my favorite line of this entire season. It's one of it, my it's, two. It sums up native folklore so fucking beautifully. It does. And, that, and this is the funniest fucking episode of the entire series. I had an ear-to-ear -ear grin the entire time. Yeah, it's one of it's, them. It, it, the scene where our lead is, you know, pondering all the scenarios with the deer people and they consistently get stupider <laughs> and stupider as they go on to the, finally creating like a werewolf but a deer. I love how I love everything about this and episode. I also it's so goddamn clever. I also love how um, uh, uh, they they the, this this isn't as strange as you might think. Back in London, oh, God, Piccadilly that's a, Circus. That's another great line. It was is a the nod. American is the American werewolf nod. That is another great. That line just in made this. me. Uh, it, um, we're horror nerds, obviously, and that just made us both grin from ear to ear. Yeah, that that's a great line. So yeah. what's your number four? So my number four is, and this tells you because I'm a massive Lucky McKee fan, um, and I love this episode, but the other three are just I loved a little more, and that would be Sick Girl. Um, it's a very sweet story. It is. Not for a lot of people, but for me, it was. Um, Bug lesbians. Yeah, and you can, and again, I, I've said this with everything Lucky McKee has ever done, and I true, and maybe it's bullshit, but for me, it's true. Uh, he has such a unique style that I've never seen scene. I like, he's that. borrowed from other people, but he makes it his own. Absolutely. I yes. love Lucky McKee's thing, and um, if, you, if you're squeamish with bugs and stuff, this one might be uh, might be a lot more uncomfortable. I don't have a problem with bugs. I think bugs are cute. Yeah, except for spiders. Yeah, except for spiders. Well, those are technically arachnids. <laughs> those are technically arachnids. Although See, I'm smarter although, than my man. Although scorpions are kind of cute. Well, boy, there you just have that better education than I ever did. <laughs> Okay. Or wait, no. Well, boy, you had a better education than I ever do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you had he had to show up his mother there acne actually. Well, they are arachnids. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a this is a good episode. I really love it. Um, and it's it, it's sweet at the end. Um, and it's kind of also not heartbreaking, but it's a little sad because she did have a little bit of time, but it just worked too fast. Mm. You'll understand when I when you watch the episode. But I really like this. Has a little bit of a Carrie vibe too with uh, one of our leads. Well, it works since our lead was in the TV miniseries of Carrie. Yeah. So what's your number three? My number three is Cigarette Burns. The pro again, like we said in the view, probably the most famous episode of the entire series. Um, I love, I love the whole uh, setup for this episode. I love the idea of like a, of our main crux of the story being searching for a lost film. I find that I, I find the idea of lost film super fascinating. I've read several books on the topic and all kinds of lost stuff. You know, that's how I found out about a lot of stuff. That's how I found out about like the Golem movies and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting, and I really love everything Carpenter did with this. It's Carpenter at his absolute best. Yeah. You know, it's one of Carpenter's best things he ever made. Yeah. Um, 
And Norman Reedus gives a really damn great performance, and you can definitely tell how he would become, like, such a big-name actor now, right, at, you know, with this segment. Also, fucking Udo Cure just being Udo Cure. I mean, he just is amazing in whatever he yeah, does. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. You're, no. you're guaranteed points just having him in the picture. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Cigarette Burns. What's your number three? My number three is Dear Women. <laughs> I really loved Dear Women, and like I said earlier with Christian, when when they said the line about the... There, and actually, this happened in London... Piccadilly Circus. I was like, oh my god! I love that. Plus it has one of the best openings, a hillbilly. Oh yeah, the hillbilly getting the shit beaten out of him by a deer. Yeah, and it's really and it shows, again, it's kind of insightful because I think that's how some men perceive women as these evil mm -hmm. succubuses that's gonna suck your soul. Well, that's kind of the whole legend behind the deer woman. Well, true, but I mean, I, but I think there's truth in legend uh -huh, that yeah. I think some men, not all men, but I think some men do. Mm -hmm. Of course, how did we, well, that's how, you know, we got like stuff like Medusa and the harpies and sirens and mermaids and all that stuff. That's you know. true, but not your mother. Uh -huh. Like, well, every other girl will be, but not your mother. <laughs> Listen to mommy. So, what's your number three? My number two. Oh, sorry. Number my one. number two is Pick Me Up. I adored this episode. Um, it, it. It's, like I said in the video, it's, I, I'm a sucker for the trope of redneck serial killer that's also, like, super eloquently, you know, speaks very eloquently at points and, you know, very deep thoughts. Again, Clay Pigeons is one of my favorite movies. Um, and I, so I, of course, was gonna like this. Larry Cohen and some of his, some of his finest, um, um, dialogue and everything, really damn fun. I'm ashamed of you. <laughs> I love that line. Yeah, that line's so damn good. Uh, admittedly, like I said in the review, Furusa Bulk it could be cut out of the story and it probably would flow a little bit better, but as a big Furusa Bulk fan, I was happy to see her there. Her character is pretty fun and interesting. Yeah. The ending is a bit over the top and like, okay, sure. It's like a fun Tales from the Crypt. Oh, absolutely. It's a very Tales from the Crypt ending of like, okay, why not? There's, sure. Why not? That's fun. But yeah, no, I definitely, and I still, I still stand by what I said. I want a sitcom about these two serial killers trying to one-up each other. That would be fucking hilarious. I get that. So it's my number two. Number right? two. My number two, and the, the these two fought like this one and my number one fought with each other. But I'll t I'll, so I'll tell you why it's only my number two, even though I fucking love this episode. It's an incident off a mountain road. Uh, Angus Scrim. Oh my god! And the reason why it didn't make my number one is because the only problem I have with this episode is she should have taken Agnes Grandpa Angus Scrim and gotten with, candy and gotten candy. Uh, and because he likes candy, it's a thing. And also, you and Ben are wrong. Until her uh, ex, an embry. until her ex, like you know, does, does he, something to her. Uh, but before that, I, as a woman, really liked his character because he knew the. I I find survivalist guys that know their shit. Yeah, he might have been a little arrogant, but he could back it up. And I like a, and arrogance is okay if you can back it up. I guess I, you. And, I know Ben said in his stream he was a douchebag, and you thought he was. I thought he was a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I love Ethan Embry as an actor, but yeah, he was a douchebag. He's great in it, but I, I didn't, I liked him. I, I don't get why the hate. <laughs> okay, my number one, if you haven't already figured it out, which I'm surprised by your number one, actually, um, now that I know what it is. Um, my number one is Takashi Miike's imprint. I figured. Okay, um, so... Great episode. Great fucking episode. It's a great, it's a great episode. And you love Billy Drago. Uh, Billy Drago, one of my favorite character actors, it, it gives one of my favorite performances in this. The story is so great. I love how... I love how we basically, like, spin the story on its head, like, three separate times over. Like, it tells us, okay, this happened. Oh, wait, I lied. That didn't happen. This happened. Oh, wait, that was a lie, too. This actually happened. Maybe I'm lying again. I like that whole bit. Like I said in the video, the only problem I have with it is, it's weird. I did find out, they actually do, they, uh, I guess it was a Mandela Effect thing where I thought they spoke Japanese, but they do just naturally speak English, which is a bit odd. But works for it works for the episode fine, you, and you can always you I love it's it's an episode you can very much like dissect and look like is is Billy Drago like entering the Taoist hell or something because everybody calls the island hell and the mm -hmm. people there demons you know is he entering hell or you know all kinds of th uh, th uh, parallels you can draw with it. I really really dug this story. Also the effects are fucking phenomenal. It's probably the most cerebral. Oh absolutely. That and homecoming. That and homecoming. Yeah, they're definitely the most cerebral. Like it, you can very much dissect and see what their the meanings behind these stories are. Okay. I like that. I'm very surprised by your number one, actually. I didn't expect it to be that high. I really enjoyed it, and if you guys haven't figured it out, it is Pick Me Up. Oh, God. And first of all, the, the opening scene scared the living fuck out of me snakes. because of Snake, and I just was like, ah! 
<laughs> you also have the scene of him choking out a dude with, with a, a snake, snake. And then, you know, the, the use Which of... is a very unique murder weapon. Yeah, I'm surprised it hasn't been done more. But um, why this one is my number one is because this is the one I had the most fun with. And it's because of of the, of the two serial killers. The one I really liked was the older one. He And, and again, it's kind of cliche because basically two serial killers are pitted against each other. One's a young little pup that thinks he knows everything. One of them has been around the world. You know, he's mm -hmm. he's done a few things. He's seen a few things. And uh, they're, they're in competition with each other. And they know, and the scene where they recognize each other for what they really are is very, very cool. And then like Christian said, I'm ashamed of you. You, you know, um, it's just, and then also it's really good because the it kind of throws you off at the beginning because the one serial killer like gives you a bad vibe and then nothing happens and then it you know you think yeah. okay maybe I'm not it's not going where I think it yeah. goes and it kind of pulls the rug out of your feet I just I don't know why I just loved it's this a fucking episode. great episode it is a really great episode I love it and, and and I like the our younger serial killer too uh you might not like this if you if you like reality because the ending is fun <laughs> if the ending you either give a passport or it's gonna piss you off I had so much fun with it I thought I actually prefer this ending like instead of a more grounded yeah I one. do too actually yeah so I and I but the but the, for, but the performance by the older serial killer I, and I've seen him in in other things I know I've seen him um, he he just is what really brings it over the top I like how how he's just very calm and you know and he says things and I, I don't know I just really dig this the one. scene with the gun yeah yeah exactly I just I just fucking love this one and um, yeah it's just really really good uh, for Russo bulk um, isn't in it that much um, which is a shame because I think it might have worked better but then I get why. Yeah, it she was also not supposed to be in it originally. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's really good in it. But yeah, that's my number one. Uh, pick me up. Pick me up is a great episode. So that's our rankings of Masters of Horror season one. Yeah. Uh, let us know what yours are in the comments. I'm actually curious what how everybody would rank season one. Yeah, and um, if you don't like our answers, no hate. Uh, if 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 one of your favorites was one of in our bottom, no hate. This is personal preference, but these are just our ideas of what really knocked our socks yeah. off and ones that you could skip. Yeah, and our overall, 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 I would say for at least season one, really, really underrated. I forgot how good this show was. Like, yeah. I re like I only really remembered cigarette burns, uh, imprint, and like an episode from season two. Those are the only ones I really remembered. And going back and revisiting has been a real treat. I'm really glad we decided to do this because pretty much every episode, even the weaker ones, have still had something really good about them, and I made me glad to see them. You know? Yeah, yeah. Except uh, chocolate and witch house were probably the worst. Yeah, yeah, but even then, there was you know. You we can laugh at rat face people. I suppose, know. yeah. Cho and Chocolate has a good performance. It just wasn't a good st horror story. You're right. You're right. I guess so. Um, but yeah. But like I said, if if you if you don't agree with us, that's totally cool. No hate. It's just what we like. Love to hear what your ranking would be. And yeah, we would love to hear what you guys would pick and tell us why whatever episode's your favorite and tell us why whatever episode you absolutely despise. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. So um, probably in November or December we will be starting with season two once I return from the far off land of Texas. Yeah, but you guys already know this because we're we're going to do a live stream that has already happened by the yeah, time you see this. Yeah, also there may be an announcement video. And if, for those of you who are just watching our Master Horrors, hi, I'm in Texas right now. <laughs> Yeehaw. Yeehaw. You bled um, so well there. I, bl I bled so well there. But yeah, so once we return, once I return from the far off land of Texas, uh, we will be starting season two. We would start season two now, but we wouldn't finish it by the time I headed off. So we figured, maybe why, why, you know, why, do cock -tee why do half the season and then just stop for like three months? Why you know? cock tea? So yeah, so, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Why cock tease why, you? Why, why cock tease you? <laughs> sure, why not? But yeah, so we'll return to Masters of Horror Season 2 relatively soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could. I, I'm surprised you didn't say, actually, Mom, it's a urethra or something. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Sophisticated Christian. Yeah. yeah. Smarter Christian. Smarter cause, Christian. Boy, I just didn't have the same education you did. I just ain't very smart. I'm the one in Texas right now. Why are you talking like that? Because you're the. I'm over one. down by the creek. <laughs> oh, uh, is it Dawson's? It's the creek. <laughs> An in joke that only we appreciate. And probably Brad. Probably. Okay. Uh, so with all that out of the way, booze and ghouls, again, we thank you so much for watching. We love each and every one of you guys. If you're new around here and you haven't hit that subscriber button, please hit that subscriber button because if you like the content, of course, um, because we appreciate every subscriber we get. And with that, we wish you a good day.
day, a good evening, and we'll talk to you soon, guys. <laughs> He's in Texas I'm now. in Texas. We don't know. We, probably by this point, pretty much everything, we've, this is probably the last thing going up that we filmed in reserve. So, yeah, uh, yeah there's probably like will be live streams and stuff going on here in the near future if they haven't already started. Um, yeah. But yeah, so you guys know more than we yeah, do. Yeah, you guys know more about what's going on with the channel than we do right now. So uh, let us know. Yeah, that past us. You know? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so yeah, and don't forget to say howdy, partner, to Christian. And if please any of you, don't. <laughs> and if any of you down in Texas see the boy, don't be afraid to come and say howdy, Christian. Six feet away. <laughs> And with a mask. With a mask. Yeah, and a condom. Just a big old condom <laughs> over everybody. He said, like, Makes you sound like whatever. <laughs> no, like, I need a body condom. Oh, a body condom. Like, you know, like a body condom. I think that's what we need right now. Uh, Just got to figure out how we can breathe through it, but yeah. But if your penis can breathe through it, I'm sure we can. <laughs> this, this got to weird places. Um, bye, guys. Bye, guys.